So welcome and good morning, everyone. Um, Sao Bona, Jumbo. It's really just incredible to be part of using technology because um, that's part of the world with, or the new ways of being in the world is using technology. So I am Joy Marie Lawrence, the moderator for today. And I'm an African Executive Coaching Council member. And it's a really great pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar. Apologies again sincerely for the technical challenges, but we live, we learn. And as Dumi said in the chat there, sometimes in the pregnant silence, it gives us an opportunity to breathe and to think. Um, the theme for the webinar is Executive Coaching and African Paradigm. So on behalf of the AECC board, I'd like to invite the chairman of the AECC to commence proceedings. But before he does that, I'd like to just honor Dr. Martin Odio Ortieno. He's an independent business advisor, accredited executive coach and governance auditor. He's the founder of the leadership group in Nairobi, Kenya. His illustrious career includes roles as CEO at the Kenya Commercial Bank, as well as a partner at Deloitte, he spent time at the Barclays Bank, which is now APSA, and then also at British American Tobacco. He's had extensive experience in the public sector in Kenya as well. He's a seasoned non-executive director of a number of listed companies. And as the board of the African Executive Coaching Council, we are deeply honored and privileged to have him as our chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll hand you over to Dr. Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joy Marie, and uh, good morning, everybody uh, on the call. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. And uh, once again, apologies for uh, a late start here due to some technical uh, issues, but we are now on and we are delighted to get going with this. Uh, this is the first webinar that we've organized as the um, Africa Executive Coaching Council. Uh, and it's part of our long-term growth and engagement agenda. And so we're very, very excited to be sharing uh, this with you. I'd like to make a few remarks about the Africa uh, Executive Coaching Council before we actually go into the, into, the, into the webinar. As Joy Marie has said, the theme of the webinar for today is Executive Coaching and African Paradigm. And just to recognize our two distinguished guests, uh, Dumi from South Africa and Mireille from, uh, from, from Rwanda, from uh, Kigali in Rwanda. Um, this webinar for me promises to be an insightful and engaging session uh, um, with the panelists sharing their experiences and I'm sure that all of us are going to benefit uh, greatly from, uh, from this. We are also using this, this session today to formally launch the Africa Executive Coaching Council. The AECC was uh, incorporated uh, in Zambia in 2018, that's two years ago, as a go to aggregate and advocate for executive coaching across the continent uh, of Africa. Our mission at AECC is to create an executive coaching ecosystem that promotes best practice and relevant support to organizations and stakeholders for positive transformation. If you go to our website, you will note that uh, uh, some of our objectives include advocacy and awareness, awareness creation on executive coaching, promotion of best practices, uh, development of knowledge and evidence, increasing access to um, accredited training, uh, and providing advisory and other networking opportunities to players in the uh, executive coaching ecosystem across the, the, the continent. We see AECC as uh, playing a role in seeking to create an enabling environment where executive coaching uh, positively impacts businesses and organizations uh, and that all the parties that uh, are involved are brought together uh, through this. AECC is a membership organization and it will provide opportunities for organizations to, to, to join through uh, three main uh, categories. So we do recognize that across the continent, there are a number of uh, executive coaching associations or organizations, uh, such as the um, uh, ICS, International Coach Federation, uh, Institute of Coaching, uh, Comensa in South Africa, uh, and other organizations that promote coaching. So those 
will um, uh, be eligible to join the association. And by joining uh, as um, associations, their members will be able to benefit from the work of the association as well. Uh, the other categories um, organizational, uh, of organizational membership will be um, executive coaching firms, uh, coaching training schools, uh, universities and academia, um, organizations who um, partake of coaching services. Again, there's a membership category for that. And then we will have an affiliate membership category, which is um, a category of uh, regional bodies, um, um, you know, and other partners who want to, uh, to work with the AACC. Uh, a lot of this information, again, is provided and will continue to be updated on our uh, websites, and uh, which will also highlight how you can join the AACC. We do have, over the last two years, developed a, a five-year strategic plan. Uh, I know that with COVID, plans are now much shorter, have much shorter, touch shorter time frames than five years, but we do have a guiding light for our activities, which uh, will see to us achieving the objectives that we've set for the AACC. As part of uh, our mandate to create growth and networking opportunities for the ecosystem players, we will continue to undertake uh, activities uh, and convene events necessary to enrich membership experience, such as uh, for webinars like the one we're just about to go into now, uh, conferences, uh, research initiatives, uh, publications, uh, and uh, membership forums. Uh, in this respect, I'm very pleased to announce that uh, the AACC will be hosting a virtual convention uh, on executive coaching in between March and April 2021. And I welcome all of you to visit our website and register to be part of this exciting event in the first quarter uh, of next year. Before I wind up my short remarks, allow me to introduce to you members of the, uh, the board of uh, ACC and who are with us on this call uh, today. Uh, and again, as you'll appreciate, this is an uh, African um, continental initiative and therefore we do have board members from across the, the, the continent. Uh, I will start by introducing our our moderator today, uh, Joy Marie Lawrence. Joy Marie is a board member, and Joy Marie is based in, uh, in, in South Africa. We do have uh, Cleopas Chiketa, who is a board member and is based in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, we do have uh, Susan Banda Mudewa, who is a board member and uh, is from Malawi, uh, but currently resident in Kenya. We have uh, Sophie Bras, Sophie is originally French, but she lives in, uh, in Kenya, in Nairobi. She's a board member as well. And she's in fact, uh, together with Susan, they are leading the, the uh, task force on the, the convention for first quarter next year. I'd like to introduce also Max Mokadi uh, Mathieu, who is a board member and based in South Africa uh, as well. Max, in fact, is a chair of the, of Comensa, which is the, Coaches and uh, Mentors uh, Association of South Africa. So very delighted to have uh, to have him on board. I'd like to introduce Zia Manji. Zia Manji is a board member and runs a coach training school in uh, in in Kenya. I'd also like to introduce uh, Paul Musoke. Paul Musoke is from Uganda, and uh, uh, Paul is uh, is a board member as well. And finally, uh, Catherine Munene. Catherine uh, lives in Nairobi in Kenya and she's a board member uh, as well. And uh, I have the privilege of, uh, of chairing that board. I hope that I haven't uh, left out anybody. I want finally just to thank uh, FSDA, Financial Sector Deepening Africa, uh, who have played a big role in uh, uh, creating awareness for executive coaching on the continent. FSDA has provided seed capital for the establishment of, uh, of AACC, and we're very, very grateful uh, to them for their continued uh, participation and involvement in the work that uh, we do. So that we get on with it, uh, let me once again just uh, uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, welcome you to this uh, session. 
uh, apologize once more for the late start and for the, for the technical challenges that uh, you may have had trying to join this, uh, this webinar. Uh, but now we are here and let me hand over back to Joy Marie Lawrence to uh, carry on with the webinar now. Thank you all very much. Joy Thank Marie. you so much. Thank you very much. Just a reminder to the audience as well, you're welcome to use social media, there's Twitter, LinkedIn, hashtag AECC, Executive Coaching in Africa. Um, you're also invited to use the chat box if you have any questions to our panelists. So today we are honored to have two phenomenal leaders and trailblazing executive coaches in their own rights as panelists. And I have to do it justice by introducing the panelists, um, even though it might embarrass them, but they've worked hard for these accolades. Um, Dr. Dumi Magadadlela is a behavioral scientist, a certified ICF um, coach and leadership development facilitator. He's also a trustee of the ICF Foundation. He serves on the faculties of the Integral Africa Coaching Center in Cape Town and on the faculty of the University of Stellenbosch. He's also part of the WebEx and the Global Team Coaching Institute. He's the co-founding chairperson of the pioneering Ubuntu Coaching Foundation. And Dumi works extensively across the African content, con continent, sorry, delivering leadership, coaching, mentoring um, to organizations and individuals. He also recently co-edited a pioneering publication on African coaching and consulting, and he uses emotional intelligence, gestalt, and the Ubuntu principles and practices um, when coaching both individuals and teams as well. So welcome, Dumi. Great to have you as part of the panel today. Our other panelist is Carrera. Carrera. She's the group CEO at Cora Coaching Group Limited, a coaching and consulting company based both in Rwanda and South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fabulous global coach and we have an exceptional executive coach, Morel Dumi. Welcome onto the panel as we begin. So the topic for this webinar is executive coaching, an African paradigm. And Africa is well positioned between both the West and the East. And as Africans, our perspectives matter, our voices matter. So I'd like to invite the panelists to share an opening perspectives on the African paradigm that executive coaching offers. And I'll give you about three minutes each. Mirel, could I start with you? Thanks. And then Dumi will follow. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Joy Marie and Dr. Martin. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today and congratulations for launching the AECC uh, today. When I got the invitation to come and speak, uh, for me it was a no-brainer to say yes because you know, what you are doing certainly resonates with our values and also our vision in Rwanda. So thank you for being trailblazers and gathering so many people today to hear the amazing work you're doing, truly to uh, raise awareness about what African executive coaches are doing on the continent. So just wanted to start by acknowledging what you are doing and you know what, the technical challenges are just part of the new normal. So don't apologize anymore for the late starts. <laughs> So, uh, to your question, Joy Marie, I think uh, the African paradigm is no longer about the African narrative being told by outsiders of the continent. It's about us executives, us leaders, taking ownership of our coaching industry. And I'm so pleased to hear that AECC has joined, you know, the likes of Comensa and the likes of our organization in Rwanda to truly bring together the East, the West, the North, the South of Africa to ensure that we collaborate, not in silos, but together to ensure that our leaders, that our executives are served accurately. So um, for me, the paradigm is starting looking after your local executives through executive coaching. So that's what I can say in less than three minutes. Thank you so much. Dumi, your perspectives, please. Thank you. Mireille, thank you very much for the opening remarks. And, and thank you, Joy, for, for, for leading us and guiding us on this as our, our moderator for this discussion. 
And Dr. Martin, I, I really, really want to really honor you for the work that you're doing. We need this across the continent. When I first heard about the, the African Executive Coaching Council, I thought, oh, okay, one more body, one more, another fragmented piece somewhere. But when I got to understand the vision and the niche in executive coaching, I thought this is needed. And this is needed now because we're on the frontiers of, of the growth of the coaching profession globally. Africa is one of the frontiers for that. And I have sight of that sitting on the, the International Coaching Federation Foundation board just to see where coaching is growing. And we need this an organized way to do to support the, the emergence and growth of this incredible profession that can change the world, that is changing the world in different, in different ways. So thank you, thank you, Martin, and your team and your brilliant board for doing this work. So just to, to appreciate uh, sharing the stage with you, my sister, Mireille, yeah, we, we've, we've walked a path and we continue to do that. And I want to, to then come back to my, to my remarks in, in about a minute or so. What I want to share is that uh, we need to ask ourselves questions. Who are we as a people? So for me, that's the first question. The theme is beautiful. Executive coaching, African paradigms. So my first question is, who are we as a people? What defines us? What makes us us? That's number one. Number two is, what is African about the coaching that we do? But the coaches that we are, how African is our coachingness or our way of coaching, our ways of coaching? What is African about that? What's unique about how we come across as coaches based in this part of the world? Out of the 7.6, I think, billion people on this planet, they are 1.3 billion Africans now, thereabout. Some say 1.4, 1.5, it's growing fast. We're the youngest continent on this planet. And what coaching means for our youthful population is that it's an opportunity waiting to be, I don't want to use the word exploited, but I would say to be fully utilized in the growth of new heart sets and mindsets. So for me, this is so, so important that we need to touch every part of African life with coaching, especially executive coaching. And we need to raise the bar about what coaching is and what coaching does. So for me, this is, this is sacred ground that we're trading on here now, Dr. Martin, uh, Joy Marie and the, and the team behind, that we need to take this very seriously as a service to humanity, starting with that. Now, the point I want to make, uh, Joy, Joy, on this is Africa's wisdom is incredible. And Africa's wisdom is not yet fully known or fully applied or fully utilized. The one thing we need to shift and change through the coaching profession are perceptions of what is African. So elements of excellence that have not yet been seen around the world that we need to bring to the fore through the way we coach, the way we do this thing, the way we show up as coaches. We need to be innovative, we need to be inventive, we need to take advantage of the opportunities that lie ahead. So a final piece I want to share now in my, my three minutes, coaching is both new and ancient in Africa. Think about that. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, both Dumi and Morel. I think you've, you've given some beautiful and thought-provoking questions, Dumi. Some of them that I was going to throw back at you as part of my list of questions. But let's, let's just pick up on one or two of the themes that came through. Um, with Morel around the whole idea of collaboration, about how we can, as different organizations, collaborate, um, certainly in the, in the African context. But I think to pick up on perhaps two of the questions that Dumi's picked up, is who are we as, as, and what does African wisdom actually mean in this context? 
you know, the ICF released their report on global coaching just this month, well, last month, September. And interestingly enough, when we talk about Africa still being quite new, you know, the new and the ancient is there. In the Middle East and Africa, and they put us together, the two, um, there is great scope. There's been an increase of over 71% since the 2016 analysis of the indication of interest in coaching skills. So certainly in the African context and how we choose to define that, there is a growth potential for coaching skills. But the question I'm going to pose both to you is what does that African paradigm, what is that African skill set when it comes to coaching? You know, we have the traditions of storytelling. We have the rich tapestries and histories of passing down knowledge. How is that showing up in executive coaching? So, Morel, would you like to respond? Yes, absolutely. And uh, I would like to comment a little bit more about the ICF uh, you know, executive coaching or global index that was published this year versus, you know, in 2016. I'm glad you brought it up because um, when that report was done or the survey was in process back in 2014 or so, I was not on the African continent. I was still based in Dubai, so outside of the African continent. So my numbers or my one voice to that uh, survey was counted towards the Middle East and that's bundled into Middle East and Africa. So what I am pleased about, and I think we can already celebrate about ourselves is that fast forward, this year, um, now there are a number of African coaches, yes, through ICF chapters that have contributed and we see indeed a growth on, you know, numbers of coaching practices being counted. And the key is to be counted, which is the first item. So to show up, to speak up and be counted in the numbers. So I agree with you that at some point it will be good to be separated from those stats, you know, separated from the Middle East and truly see the African industry as part of, you know, the overall things. Now, how do we get there? We get there by indeed uh, doing things such as what Dr. Dumi does so beautifully by, you know, sharing the Ubuntu story through his, you know, small book that he has released about stories, but are teachable stories with global standard practices. So, yes, we have two paradigms here, the global competitive advantage at the same time as the local dynamics that we, we need to bring up and truly own it. So another key word I would like the uh, viewers to go away with is ownership. We need to own our content. We need to own our intellectual property. We need to own our coaching models that are unique to us. So what we have done in Rwanda through our very first uh, uh, academy, co-training academy in Rwanda is that we made sure that the uh, courses, the curricula are local and own as our trademark, but at the same time complying with uh, the ICF code of ethics and standards as well. So that way we cannot be you know, seen as a substandard level of coaching. It is, you know, we are on the global stage. We are there, up there with any global players. So ownership, show up and be counted. Those will be my three key remarks, truly for us to be heard, seen, and indeed make that difference that we all want to make. Great, thank you for that. Ownership, show up and own your own coaching models as well. Perhaps we could just do me if you wouldn't sh wouldn't mind sharing with the audience around the Ubuntu coaching model that you've developed and and engaged with across the continent. Would you like to yeah. share? Thank you, Joy Marie. And Marie, I, I, I totally agree with you on owning our own mm. tools. I call them our our frames, our maps, and our lenses that we work with. And I want to. Uh, a sh shout out to, to one person that's leading in this, uh, my good friend and fellow coach, uh, Nobantu, who is doing uh, Ubuntu coaching globally in an incredible way. And then my other good friend and fellow coach and someone who I've worked with for many, many years, Dr. Paddy Pampalis, where we have honed the work on Ubuntu coaching. 
and the coaching center and and i can i can share this is one of the leading coaching schools on the continent and it's brought in very strongly the african paradigms in that and we've shared this on different platforms around the world and the the concept here is we this is where the Africanness part in the question I posed earlier, Joy Marie, was that what is African about us? We need to know and own who we are. Mm -hmm. and, and building on to uh, Mireille's response, brilliant. I love that, by the way, Mireille, about ownership and being there. And say, yes, we all own it, but we have a uniqueness in how we show up. And that comes through in the emphasis of our, our what you call our focal point is not the individual which is the Western way of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, Southeast Asia, look at Africa, look at La Latin America, and then the, the global South, as they call it, and then the global North, there's an emphasis on the individual, that it's, it's me, myself, and I, and my inner circle. But when you look at our worldview, what call our ontology, on, and these big words and, and that, that as Africans, our emphasis is on the collective. Other words that are used is, as community. It's the greater good and that. Coaching needs to grow up and transition from wait, putting too much weighting on the individual and transcend that and be inclusive of the collective. And that to me is the bridge where we need to pay attention that Ubuntu coaching is really saying that I am nothing on my own or to be gentle, not as harsh. I am less when I focus only on myself. Mm -hmm. I am much more and have greater impact when I act, operate, function and contribute. And this is where coaching comes in. The next word I'm gonna use is what we are about. When I serve the greater good through my talents, my skills, and my gifts that the almighty God has placed in only in me, because that's my uniqueness. That's only where the individual exists, mm. that I own my gifts and my talents, and I use my profession of coaching to express them in my service to the greater good. That is where coaching comes alive. And that is where coaching needs to grow. Right now, what, what you, you shared, Joy Marie, I'm involved in the Global Team Coaching Institute as, as part of, of faculty, developing that. Team coaching is exploding. Just watch this space. And this resonates directly with who we are as Africans and African coaches. Yes. And we need to take advantage of that and show up more in that space. Thank you. Yes. Beautifully, well said. And, and perhaps just to add, if we just reflect on what's happened in the last couple of months around the interruption of what COVID's done, and we've seen a collective systemic awareness of what a disease can do to disrupt in who we are. And at the same time, collectively, how if we all act in unison, you can bend the curve and, and do certain interventions. It comes back to about your point about where's that collective community? that inclusiveness of saying how we're looking after each other in achieving that. I think I want to, to, to touch on some points that you've both mentioned around really developing and owning the coaching models that are relevant, the frameworks, and certainly the maps that come out of Africa. And, and to Miral, you identified a need and you, and you grew a coaching academy that wanted to address capacitating Rwandans and in the case in South Africa as well, so that they could be coached by executive coaches who had that experience of someone from their own community, instead of looking to the East and the West and North and South to bring in those executive coaches each time. So share with us a little bit more about how that got off and how, how that's going right now. Yes. Thank you. And uh, before I answer that, I love what uh, Dumi said about, you know, uh, the West focusing more on independence and us in Africa really focusing on interdependence. 
So we are interdependent rather than independent from each other or codependent from each other. So I, I love that perspective of interdependence because, you know, as a nose, you can function without the ears, there are, you know, everything, the whole body, which is what we are. So um, now, how can someone, you know, viewing this or listening to us truly create something that is unique to their local markets in Africa. So I think it starts with acting on what you know is true and also um, seeing a problem and attending to that problem. So for us in Rwanda, what I saw is that, as I shared earlier on, I, you know, I, I lived outside of the continent for more than 20 years. And when I came back, when I received that call to come back to Mother Africa in 2014, I saw that there is a problem somehow, somewhere, uh, where Rwanda specifically, unlike Kenya, unlike uh, South Africa, where the coaching industry is truly developed and stable, I saw that in Rwanda we, we were indeed dependent on international supply of coaching services. So somehow, somewhere, there were some economical issues that you know I saw, but at the same time, the skills resonating and remaining in Rwanda. So I thought, hang on, in order for us to truly make that difference and create that paradigm shift, we need to own our own industry. We need to be part of the whole ecosystem, economically, but also the education part of it. So that's how the journey started back in 2015 in uh, being acquainted with the global ways of uh, creating content that, you know, the likes of ICF or comments I can accredit and vet off as golden standards. So that was the journey we started. But at the same time, we had to educate the market, which is an old way of, I believe, in Africa. It is not just in Rwanda, but we need to speak to that as well, Joy Marie. Uh, educate the local market in Rwanda to also inform them that local people have the same capacity, the same uh, pedigree as anybody outside of the continent and outside of the borders. So that has been a long journey that we undertook, that I personally undertook for more than two years. Um, and it's only between 2015 and 18 when we launched the Academy. But the whole journey to inform our local market that there are randoms who are capable of uh, designing and delivering top-notch, excellent coaching services locally in impacting local inland revenues, etc. So it has been a journey and I'm sure that those of you watching us from different countries, you may think that, you know, the big centers out there, the Joburg, the Lagos, the Nairobi's of this world have it all figured out. No, there is a lot of work that you need to do, but it all starts with you. It all starts with you acknowledging within yourself that you can do that, that you can take on that call to shift that paradigm locally by also making sure that you are aligned with the standards of professions. So the key word is standards, ethics, to ensure that indeed, while we are bringing in the Ubuntu, the local dynamics, we are not left behind. So for me, my team will tell you that quality and quality assurance is number one thing, because we live a legacy. It's not just for the immediate executives, it's not for the immediate leaders that we are serving, but it's for those that will come after us. So um, I can share a lot more on that, Joy Marie, but I, in summary, I can say, pick up that phone call, pick up that call. If you truly want to create an academy, be part of the AECC or Comensa or ICF in your country, get on the drawing board, write down, and you will have an amazing platform such as this to help you with the content, with the support you need. And I believe Martin will speak to that, um, you know, the advisory element of the likes of, uh, you know, Martin, Dumi, myself, and others that are part of this, that truly can be, uh, like in the African context, the auntie, the grandfather that has always been there by the mango tree, uh, teaching the next generation, we are here for you to help you craft top-notch global standard uh, curriculum for your country. Thank you, Joy Marie. Well said. I almost want to say Africa matters. Africa has coaching skills and techniques and frameworks 
that can meet and exceed global standards. But we need to be able to own it, to recognize it and be proud of it. Um, and the work that you're doing and Doom is doing is contributing towards that. Certainly as the African Executive Coaching Council, we are aiming to provide this ecosystem and platform for that collaboration and co-collaboration to happen across the continent as well. So thank you for that um, particular call out. Uh, just a reminder to continue to send us some questions in the chat box. Um, I'm going to just read one that's come out from Sheetal. Um, and she's written a question here, Sheetal Shah. How do we help our African executives from distinguishing between a great good collective versus a tribal and a socialized collective that can often influence um, going against the higher greater good? Would either of you like to pick that up? So how do we help our African executives from distinguishing between a great good collective versus the tribalized or social collective that can go against that? Uh, that's that's a great question, Shital. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think uh, one thing I'm, I would like to share in this is uh, we call it mindsets and heartsets and the value system that we are relying on as we navigate our our shared world. Really, a, a mindset is a is an attitude and it's a way of being, but also it's a, a cluster of thoughts and patterns that are embodied and ingrained and, and attached to them are, are what we call it's a emotions, uh, a, a state, a psychological state of looking at things that generates a particular perception that says, this is right, this is wrong. And that's where we need to go in to start to change things and impact our leaders, our executives, because the, the role of leaders in, in, in this new or next normal where it's, it's, it's unpredictable what it's going to be like. Our leaders, or us as leaders, need to have an agile mind or mindset or heart set. We need to be embracing and welcoming of new ways. But mm -hmm. it's not easy. Try shifting patriarchy right now, just by one notch. Yeah. It's not easy, or religion, or other forms, so-called culture and traditions. These show up in organizations that we, we function in, we operate in. So for me, the, the gift of a youthful population that we have is to start at an early age and build in coaching into the education system. And this is a massive task, but it's, the onus is on us. Dr. Martin, the, for me, this council needs to play a bigger part with governments across the continent. I have the, the privilege of working a lot with the African Union and NEPAD and, and this, those structures, bringing in coaching mindsets into those spaces. And, and, and then we, it needs to, to cascade all the way down to the, the, the early childhood development. And this is why my wife and I have written a children's book exactly on that. Mm -hmm. We've got to start somewhere. It's not someone else. I like what Mireya was saying. It's not someone who's going to come and do that. Knowledge, knowledge is... Is, is, it doesn't need a visa to go across. So we need to understand that we are already so well interconnected as Africans and we can do this. And the world is looking up to us. Your point, Mireille, on, on standards is so critical. And what you're saying, Joy Marie, we need yeah. to transcend. We have an opportunity now to develop a way of being that has not been done anywhere else in the world. And it's yeah. up to us to do that with infusing value-based coaching skills at an early age for our children to grow up with just one thing of self-confidence, knowing that I am an incredible gift to any and everyone that I meet mm. and build a coaching mindset of being yourself and not trying to be a character you saw on Cartoon Network. Yeah. And so, so the challenge then is how do we start bringing those messages from the young age? Because Africa's got a predominantly young, um, uh, youthful population. And certainly in other uh, company, countries around the world, you don't want to just import models and, and frameworks and techniques. It's how do we embrace and take 
from, I don't want to say from the bottom upwards, but really from a grassroots perspective and instill those values so that we can grow and nurture the transformation of Africa as well in a collective way. How would you look at that? Um, maybe if I can uh, add to that, um, we, one of our mottos at our academy is that you can transform the world one session at a time, one coaching session at a time, one coach at a time. So it takes a coach, it takes a client for the mindset to be shifted or for the paradigm to be completely shifted. So um, whether it is collective responsibility or helping people shift the mind from going, you know, going from tribalism to collective good, it all starts with people, with one person at a time. So typically, uh, as I'm sure all of you coaches know on this call, um, we are part of a fabric. We are part of a, a, a sort of a collective consciousness. We come to this world in a particular family group of a certain you know, mm -hmm. background or tribe or, you know, background. Let's just use the word background. <laughs> so that is something that shapes our mind, that shapes who we are, how we see the world. Um, our worldview is already tinted, is already seen through someone else's eye. But for me to be awakened as a human being, I need to do work on myself. And that's where coaching comes in, where we truly help people through, you know, life coaching, self-discovery, and of course, the leadership, uh, uh, personal leadership discovery as well. We help people to truly identify for themselves who they are for themselves. Yes, yeah. as part of the whole fabric. Now, I think that one of the key messages, as we all know, as coaches, is to make sure that we create that safe space where people can still come to us as they are at point A. And then through the journey of self-discovery, utilizing whatever coaching techniques or frameworks we have, we can help them see that we all are the same as human beings. I am the same in the East, in the West, in the South, or the North, and even outside of the continent. I understand that you know we're all about uh, African coaching in, on this specific call, but globally, every single human being is going after that one same thing, to do what he or she was born to do. And that can only be achieved through knowing yourself, knowing your place, your purpose, etc. cetera. So um, that would be, Joy Marie, the way for me to answer that question. Thank you. I wanna, Thank you. I wanna build on that, Joy Marie. I wanna build yeah. on that. I love what you said, Mira, because that, that is the foundation. I am the gift mm -hmm. and I have the gifts within me, but for me to, to, to showcase that gift, I need to be in touch, in connection with others. And this is where we need to take the, this uh, amazing gift that coaching gives to all of us to the next level. So first, take care of yourself. If you don't, you, you're going to crash and burn. And, and then what, what gift are you when you're, you're, you're paralyzed by your lack of self-care and taking care of yourself? So I, I love what you're saying, Mireille. Then after you take care of yourself and you are a healthy contributing member of society, how then do you show up in your interactions, in your engagement, in your service to the greater good? You've got to have the, that right mindset that I am part of a greater whole here. But I am a part, very important. I am a part. I'm not the end all in everything. I'm not the panacea to every situation. I have my strength, hence the self-knowing that Mira is talking about. When you know yourself, you will know where to insert yourself. The insertion points, the incision points. If you are a surgeon and, and someone has a brain, something that needs to be taken out, you don't go and, and open them in the chest. You go to the head where the problem is. But if you don't know yourself, you're all over the place. Very important to be specific this is who I am, and this is where I can make the biggest difference. Their right. self-knowledge is key to greater service in the coaching profession. There are people that are coaching that are not actually are better being mentors than coaches, but they may not know the difference. 
and it's just called coaching and mentoring. This is one of the things, uh, Joy Marie uh, or Dr. Martin and the board that you need to look at. Yeah. Being crystal clear what it is that we are doing as a profession. The profession is relatively new on the continent. So we do need to do that due diligence of mm. constantly cl clarifying and not thinking that everybody understands what it is that we're doing. Because yeah. in our inner circle, we understand it. But we have an advocacy role here. And this is where I see uh, this organization really uh, making a bigger difference. Mm. So, yeah. Sorry, John Murray, I, 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 I ran it on a little bit there. Look, the passion's there, keep it going. And I, and I think also, I'd like to just add to that as well. You know, part of it, yes, knowing who we are, understanding, and also the focus of understanding African coaching. Because developing executive coaches or coaches, but if they're using models outside of the context in which they're operating, how do we show, demonstrate, make available those African specific coaching models that really brings to attention the context in which you're living? So, and part of that is growing and understanding. So, and becoming more familiar with the different frameworks and maps and techniques and tools around coaching specifically in the African context and taking on that collective. So the likes of homegrown coaching academies contribute towards that. But certainly an organization like the African Executive Coaching Council is trying to create that partnership for companies, buyers of the services, and even for coaches themselves who want to deepen their skills and awareness of what some of those specific African coaching skills and techniques are. It's a place and a system and an ecosystem to come and engage with. So the question after my long statement there is, how do we encourage more of an African flavored executive coaching experience um, with clients? Um, oh, yes. <laughs> Just a short answer. Um, I think the, the wealth that we have and in Africa we definitely have a lot of wealth and the wealth we have is the people is the stories so we can and we should co-create with the stories in our local environment so we, yes we may think about the global standards etc but it's only the people you are coaching you are serving that will give you that edge that content that um that paradigm you need to create that. So concretely, I'm in Rwanda, I am coaching you know, business women or men, uh, the techniques and the frameworks that I have must be tailor-made to the business environment of my clients in Rwanda. So meaning if I'm coaching also men, I need to be aware and conscious of the dynamics around the coaching a male executive versus coaching a female executive or woman executive. So as coaches, we cannot copy and paste a model on everything. So it is our responsibility as coaches to truly align with the local and cultural dynamics and even more specifically, go down to the next level of depth of the individual in front of you. Oftentimes, I've had to truly be in tune with the person that I'm coaching in the room. We know about what's in the room, the dynamics, the coaching presence, in order for me to truly make sure that the one hour I spend with my client is utilized specifically for that context, that organizational context, that you know, gender context, and many other contexts. So I guess my short answer would be, uh, be flexible and agile to uh, adapt your coaching methodology to the local environment. So um, I can give many examples of not just Randa. Uh, when I went to coach leaders in Gabon in French, um, I had to adapt entirely our leadership development and leadership coaching methodology to Gabon 
and to French. I saw someone in the chat talking about Francophonie. I mean, that's also another topic that could be a whole session for a day of how do we make sure that we have a lot more French speaking coaches in Africa. So uh, without saying much, I think as a coach, when you coach your clients, be in tune with the person, be in tune with the language, the culture, but also uh, by culture, we mean organizational and country and otherwise as well. So over to you, Dumi. I, I love that. I love that. Um, uh, yeah. I want to, to add to what Mireille said is uh, calibration. This is one thing we do all the time as coaches. And, and I want to share a, a, a thing that uh, just gained recently from the, the WPAX uh, Global Team Coaching Institute in, in, in the work that we're doing there. The, I think it was David uh, Clutterbuck, he said, uh, ABC, which that's what, as coaches, we need to constantly be doing ABC, which is always be contracting. That ABC, you do it all the time, almost in every session, but you do it before you engage a client, and then you do it with every encounter with the, with the client, every coaching session, you recontract, contract, and recontract as you go. And African models, African ways of working with, with clients. We, when, just look at the greeting, how we greet. When you're greeting, you're contracting. So you start noticing from there. Are you shaking hands? Okay, COVID won't let you do that just now. What are you doing? How are you contracting in your greeting, in your engagement, in your interaction with your client? Whether it's text, email, telephone, Skype, or Teams, or Zoom, or any other platform, whatever you're using to engage. What's your intent with that? So calibration, self-calibration, which is really self-regulating. But as African coaches, and I see brilliant questions, I think it's, it's jo Joanne and, and, and Shital in chat. I would love to come back to that, Joy Marie, Joy Marie. but for now, I want to say that we have models, methods, and ways of engagement as coaches in this part of the world that are working now, but they will not achieve the full uh, thrust or spectrum of what they can achieve if we just import them whole and try to, to fit in our worldviews into them. We need to find a way of customizing what we import for it to work in our context, in our environment. And we can't have the illusion that, no, but Africa is like any other part of the world, just need to bring it in and, and apply it and it will work. Fall flat on your face. Oh, organizations and systems will just pass it on and you will see very little shifts because you do not pay attention to the local context that you're dealing with. Exactly. Very important. Um, Joy Marie, can I just add something that really came to me and I, I feel I need to blurt out as an intuition um, and the challenge. So I see we have more than 50 people on the call, but let me challenge you uh, individually to think about your own cultural training methods, uh, whether, you know, traditionally what uh, was done before. I'm thinking in South Africa, there is the rite of passage and the uh, Nelson Mandela movie with Idris uh, Delba just came to, to my mind, you know, when um, it was painted, uh, when, you know, Mandela was being um, given that rite of passage from boy to man. In Rwanda, we have that as part of Itorero. I'm sure in other African countries, there is that bar mitzvah, type of thing which the Jews have. We know about the Jews uh, bar mitzvah. So let me challenge you, all of you on this call, and myself included, because I had that check-in in my spirit, to um, think about how we can indeed go into depth and create coaching models or even mentoring, uh, you know, training platforms that embed our local rites of passage type of things uh, for both men and women, and now raise it up to the global standard. Yeah. That is something I felt I needed to share with people on the call. I think I just want to, to emphasize both of your, your points there. And it's interesting that certainly from an ICF perspective, because 
uh, ISF members well, they've changed some of their core competencies, the new ones that are coming in. And one of them is really around the evoke awareness is around understanding the local context um, and bringing that awareness into when you're coaching with an individual as well. But also to, to build on your question and, and in the chat box, Joanne and Sheetal and a couple of others, just because we're not aware of African coaching models doesn't mean that they do not exist. Yeah. It's up to each of us to become aware of what there is out there. So yes, Viral, there may well be coaches and executive coaches who are already including rites of passages, ways of doing that. Certainly at the Integral Africa Coaching School, one we went through, we went through a process of imbibing and, and somatically embracing it as well. Um, and there will be other ones, other places in Africa that are doing it. So the challenge, again, is to become more aware. Don't just assume that there isn't any African coaching frameworks and tools and techniques, but rather tap into the likes of the AECC, look into this network of people who are engaged to find out what else there is. But better yet, we have the opportunity to develop one. And that's the beauty of the youngness of Africa, of the opportunity of executive coaching that we can create those frameworks, tools, and techniques ourselves. I'm very mindful of time because we need to, to wrap up and clearly we can talk about these different conversations um, a lot longer. I'd like to, to ask both of our panelists if they would like to make any closing statements and then I'm going to hand over to Martin um, for any comments as well. Dumi or Morel, who would like to go? Sure. Um, I guess the one message I can share with, uh, with the viewers is this. Your life is like a book. You are handed a book whenever you come to this world where you have a blank statement and you really write your book with whatever you want to do, whatever you want to achieve, whatever you want to be remembered by. And us coaches, we have the same book. We know a lot. We have a privilege of understanding the human psyche or mind to some extent. We have that additional responsibility to ensure that we awaken humanity or we evoke transformation to the next dimension so that our collective consciousness goes um, to the highest level of our potential. So my closing remark will be you coaches, you who are involved in helping executives, just do whatever you need to do. Take ownership of writing your book, your story, so that indeed others can run with it. Thank you for having me today. And well done again, Martin and Joy Mary, for launching the AECC today. Thank you very much, Mira. To me. Thank you, Mireille, for, for the wonderful closing remarks. And, and thank you again, Joy Marie, uh, Dr. Martin, and the team. And to everyone on this call, uh, as a fellow human, a fellow citizen of our small planet, I want to say that uh, we have a lot of answers to a lot of challenges that the world is facing right in the middle of or it, it, right within who we are, within us, all of us. It's about having the courage to know that I can make a difference where we are, whoever I am, wherever I am. Ubuntu means I am because you are. Our responsibility as executive coaches, as coaches, is to make sure that we show up and be enablers of others and creating spaces where everyone else can also show up with the magic that's been placed within each and every one of, of us. This is our responsibility. So when I open the space for someone to show up, I give credence, the light, Marin Williamson, the light, everyone has the courage to show up and shine their light too. And together, we are much, much more. I'll end with a metaphor, Joy Marie, quickly. We are all musicians. And we have, from the next village, Europe, America, there's other villages, there are other musicians there. 
and they're playing their music. And we prefer to dance to their music when we're also musicians and can also have our own dance moves. So it's time to step onto the dance floor and play our own music. Thank you. And the play our own Jerusalem, which came from South Africa and now it's taking over the whole world. <laughs> Love that analogy. And thank you for the book analogy too. Thank you so much to the panelists. Appreciate your time and um, I've enjoyed having this discussion with you and look forward to many, many more. Martin, over to you. Thank you so much, um, Dumi and uh, Mireille. I'm actually lost for words. I was kind of sitting here imbibing the wisdom as you engage in that conversation. Uh, and Joy Marie, thank you so much for uh, moderating this session. Um, you know, so uh, eloquently and uh, really we could have gone on and on and on. I've been really encouraged uh, by, this, by this discussion and uh, as I reflected and I was taking notes furiously here as the two of you were speaking, uh, I won't even attempt to, uh, to, to paraphrase or to summarize what you've said because it was just so rich and natural coming from, you know, two great, uh, you know, uh, Pan-Africanists here and uh, great coaches as well. Uh, on, on, on our continent. So once again, uh, thank you very much. I was saying that uh, I was really encouraged because uh, you know, part of that conversation really speaks to the objectives and the mission of AACC. Um, you know, when you mention things uh, uh, like you know, operating at the African uh, leadership level uh, or continental level, you know, when I spoke earlier about some of our membership categories, uh, we certainly have a category there which talks to uh, uh, leaders at, at that level because I truly believe that transformation of the continent uh, requires us as coaches to, to help uh, and to work together to partner uh, with leadership at that level uh, for the greater good of the continent. So I was quite encouraged by, by, by that. Uh, also just to note that uh, you know, many people on this call um, belong to other coaching organizations and AECC is not about competition with anybody else. What AECC is to, doing is to aggregate all the players that have been uh, that have existed and that will come on board later on, bring together the you know the the, the coaching schools like Mireille School, Mireille School uh, bring together uh, organizations like Comensa, bring together um, you know uh, corporations, uh, bring together government players, etc. So that we have got this beautiful ecosystem that together we can achieve much more to go back to that uh, Ubuntu terminology, you know, I am because you are. So rather than being ourselves as individuals, we can actually bring together everybody uh, in this. So I'm quite, a, I'm very, very excited uh, about, uh, about that. Uh, and, and I'd like to thank my colleagues on the AECC board for the amount of time they're dedicating for us to get uh, this young organization uh, off, off, off the ground. Um, you know, when you are talking about uh, uh, an African uh, uh, paradigm and an African way of, of, of coaching, it just reminded me about learning styles and, 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 and as we grew up at the feet of our grandparents sitting on the ground, uh, you know, dusty, uh, but still being able to revive through those stories. Uh, some of them were, they were telling us stories, but they were also coaching us in the process, helping us to think for ourselves about uh, you know, what it is that uh, was more important for us. And I really like the questions at the beginning, uh, Joy Marie, which were about, you know, who we are as a people, who are we as a people? Uh, you know, how do we ensure that we are touching lives right across, uh, et cetera. So the challenge really here is for each and every one of, one of us on this call to really rise up to the occasion uh, so that together we can build an ecosystem that will truly transform our continent. Uh, you know, I love Mireille's, uh, you know, one at a time, you change lives one at a time, uh, but also collectively, uh, that by changing one at a time and also going by the group uh, and, and the team uh, coaching framework that Dumi spoke about, that together and a combination of other frameworks that we can actually deliver this, uh, this objective. So I'd like to really thank, uh, end this by uh, really, Thanking, um, first of all, our, our two great speakers today, Dumi and, and, and Mireille. 
And it's really a small world because we'll continue to meet uh, as we build this AECC. Um, it's going to be such a community because we will all continue to meet in one forum or another as we go forward. So uh, looking forward to the next time that, uh, that we are meeting. Uh, Mirel, I believe we are meeting with you on Sunday this week. So just to show how small a world this is. Um, I'd like to thank Joy Marie. She's a member of the board, but she's really uh, taken this up. And uh, as you've seen from her uh, moderating skills here, you know, we could have sat here listening to this Joy Marie for forever, you know. Um, I'd like to thank our secretariat, uh, uh, Diana and uh, Sylvia, and the support uh, in, in the background. Uh, I know that you are kind of quite stressed, like uh, when we were starting this. Um, but now you've got an opportunity to go back and uh, have a glass of your favorite drink, um, whatever that is, for the rest of the afternoon. I'd like to thank my fellow board members uh, who are on this call today and those who are not here as well. Uh, but uh, last but not least, all our participants, uh, thank you very much for being here. I do hope that this has been worthwhile, uh, spending one hour with us today. And uh, do remember to go up into our website, uh, look up our website, look up more information that we have uh, uh, up there. Uh, we've just put up uh, the, uh, the contacts on the screen. Uh, you will get more information. Uh, follow, us, follow us on social media. Um, as well. If you've got any questions, please uh, send those to us through the Secretariat. And uh, we will be uh, forwarding to you information around registration for membership. And we do then hope that you can join us and uh, also just look up to the convention, which is our big event happening uh, in the early part of next year. Uh, do register early so that you can take account of the early bird uh, discounts uh, for that as well. So I'd like to end there. Uh, thank you all very much. Have a good afternoon. Have a good week, uh, weekend, and see you next time. Thank you.